Hey, what's going on guys? Before we get started, I just want to mention that by the time this video is out, I should be live on Twitch streaming the new Lords of the Fallen game. So if you are interested in that, definitely check me out there after this video. But as for today, we're going to be ranking every single one of the Legion arms in Lies of P. Now, every single one of these Legion arms can be very viable. You just got to pick one that actually has the scalings of which corresponds with your build. Because all of these tend to just perform almost just as well as one another. Because at the end of the day, these things are just secondary options. They're not even necessary to even beat the game at all. I have like five playthroughs already completed and for most of them I didn't even bother touching the Legion arm for the most part because in my opinion they tend to be pretty weak. They run out of Legion pretty quickly and the damage really isn't even all there as well. Now you can replenish your Legion by actually using the Legion magazine but these items are only finite. If they were infinite use like the pulse cells of which replenish when you actually rest at a stargazer, I would probably like them a lot more and actually use them a lot more. But with that extra ogre that you do have, I'd rather just spend that on actually throwable objects because they'll just end up performing a lot better than legion arms do. But you still benefit of actually having legion arms, obviously. So for today, I'm just going to rank all of them and tell you guys which ones are the best for certain types of circumstances and tell you how they all actually work as well. But yeah, that'll do. Let's just get started. Now starting off at the bottom, we have the DSX Machina, which is your lone motivity based legion arm. Now as I was talking about how every single one of these things is viable, this one is probably the only one that's not. Because this thing performs very similar to the Falcon Eyes, just a lot worse though. Now obviously this one is still going to have a use because the Falcon Eye scales off technique, whereas this one scales off motivity. So if you have a motivity based build, this one's going to be kind of like one of your only options. Which is unfortunate because the reason why this is bad is because it's a mind bomb of which you leave onto the ground, which takes a while to set up has a very small AOE, doesn't do much damage, and you get only a couple of charges as well until you have to wait for it to refill. And trying to hit anything with this is like borderline impossible. And you'd think it'd do a lot more damage, but no. The Falcon Eyes can do almost just as much damage, and that one is a projectile. So this one definitely needs to get its range doubled and probably its damage doubled as well, and then I might actually recommend using it. But if you do have a motivity based build, I'd probably rather go with the Fulminus or the Aegis. Number seven, we have the left armor steel, which is a motivity and technique based legion arm. Now this is the one that you start off with because all it does is just punch. Now the punch itself isn't really too crazy. It actually does consume a lot of legion. Don't really know why it consumes that much legion and the damage isn't really that great. But when fully charged, you actually can do some nice damage and it does stagger very well. So against certain types of enemies, if you are struggling to actually get some stagger damage off, you can just pop this bad boy on punch straight through them and actually might get some decent stagger. But the reason why it's going to get lower on the list is because one, you actually can't upgrade this one at all. And as I mentioned previously, it still takes a bunch of legion. I don't know why it does. Please just make it not consume as much legion. Number six, we have the pandemonium. Now this is an advanced based legion arm of which when you actually use it, it leaves an acid pool on the ground to which this pool will last about 10 seconds. And when enemies are standing inside of it, they will take a little bit of damage over time and take some decay build up. Now this legion arm can be pretty decent for crowd control and hitting multiple enemies at once. And being that it does leave a damage over time pool on the ground, it actually can pair well with fatal attack. So when you get the stagger, you can just throw the pandemonium on the ground and actually end up getting the fatal attack and it will still take damage during that animation. Now, Unfortunately, the damage of this isn't really too great, but its main use is going to be proccing that decay status effect. Which in all honesty, there are plenty of other things that just do that a lot better, like throwable objects, your grindstones. If you have an advanced build already, you're probably better off going with the acidic crystal spear. It would just end up doing it so much quicker. And being that acid is best against humans and there being that there aren't many humans in this game, but it still can be a decent projectile that is pretty easy to use. Now, thankfully, it actually does get a lot better when you do upgrade it because a regular horizontal spread is very hard to actually hit. But when you upgrade it once, you actually can change it to a vertical spread. And then when you upgrade it again, you actually can increase the range of that. And the range itself can actually go pretty far. Now, unfortunately, the third upgrade, I don't really care for it as much. After the acid pool duration has ended, it will end up exploding. Which honestly, enemies are not going to stay around that long to just wait inside that pool to explode. And even if they do, this damage still really isn't that great. So overall, it can be decent if you do upgrade it a couple times and can be somewhat okay against certain types of humans. But for the most part, there are probably much better options out there. At number five, we have the Flamberge, which is another advanced based legion arm of which actually does offer you a short range fire based AOE. Now this is actually pretty decent because it actually does not consume much legion at all. So if you ever go up against any types of carcasses, you could just throw this bad boy on and you end up just getting a bunch of kills really quickly with this thing. Because the range isn't even that bad and you actually can upgrade it to extend the range. And you can just hold on to it, do consistent damage and just let go at any single point. So it is actually pretty risk free on top of that. And upgrading it to max will actually end up making it do more damage when you hold on to it. And actually give you the option to overheat it, which you will click triangle when it actually gives you the prompt. And you'll just end up just doing a bunch of damage that way as well. Now the reason why it's not going to get much higher is very similar to the pandemonium in that throwables, grindstones or any type of weapons actually just do fire damage like the salamander dagger will produce end up being better options in terms of just doing fire damage in general but if you are going through an area that is full of carcasses i would just still recommend using it because fire damage is extremely good against them and this actually will do it pretty well at number four we have the fulminus which is a motivity and advanced based legion arm of which actually does offer you a shock based aoe that is actually relatively short range as well 
So something like the Flamberge might be a bit more consistent due to that it has that more range. But the reason why I'm going to prefer this one a little bit more is because shock damage is probably just a lot more useful. Because one, there's a lot more puppets in the game and shock will just end up making them take more stagger damage, which is it's going to be more beneficial in my opinion. And another good thing about the Fulminus is that you don't really need to upgrade it much to benefit off it. You can just keep spamming the attack over and over again and end up proccing shock pretty quickly. But if you do upgrade it, it actually will enhance the performance of when you actually do fully charge it to just make them take a bunch more damage and give you the actually option to overcharge it to just do a big massive AoE. Which can be pretty decent in some circumstances against certain types of like mini bosses. But if you have an opening for that long against like a regular boss, I would still recommend just going with like a charged heavy attack instead with your regular weapon or a fable art because that'll end up doing more damage. Because this, the same as some of the other types of legion arms, don't really do as much damage. And once again, things like throwable objects, grindstones, or weapons that will just do electric blitz would just probably perform better. But being that it is a way to proc shock pretty quickly, and the fact that it does have a decent motivity scaling does make it pretty useful. Number three, we have the Falcon Eyes. Now this is a technique based legion arm, of which this thing actually does fire off a projectile which sticks to an enemy, and then later on it actually does explode. Now unfortunately, this thing is extremely slow to the point where it's just not viable to use in the middle of a boss fight, because you're just going to get hit almost every single time. However, when you actually max out this thing, it turns into one of the best Legion Arm, if not the best Legion Arm in the entire game, because the first upgrade will actually increase the AoE, the second upgrade will actually give you the option to do a quick second shot, and then the third upgrade will let you use it while dodging. Now this is really good because it increases the animation speed by so much to where you can just shoot it straight away. So basically how to use it is just you dodge, I recommend dodging forwards because after you shoot actually does make you take a couple of back steps and sometimes you can be out of range. So you just dodge, use it a couple times and you end up just doing a bunch of damage within a couple seconds. And in that instance it actually makes it extremely risk free as well. So for me personally, I wouldn't recommend touching this thing if it's not upgraded, but when you have enough Legion Calibre, definitely max this thing out and use it because it is that good. Number two, we have the Aegis or the Aegis, however you say it, don't really care. But this thing is a motivity and technique based Legion arm, of which this thing actually works as a shield. But it does actually have a bunch of uses alongside with this. When an enemy does actually hit you while blocking, they actually will get damage with a small little AoE. Which the damage isn't really too crazy, it's not the best thing in the world. But the best thing about this Legion arm is that you can actually deflect while blocking as well. And there's probably a glitch going on with this thing, because when you spam the block button, you basically can just deflect almost every single attack. I don't know what's going on, but you don't even have to time your deflects with this thing, you just hold onto the block and just keep spamming and you almost deflect every single attack. Now unfortunately this actually does decrease your legion while you are blocking at the exact same time so it's not the most broken thing but the fact that it actually does make it easy to just deflect attacks it's obviously going to be really good and it actually doesn't just end there. The upgrades of which you actually do get with this thing are pretty decent. The first one actually does allow you to guard while attacking which can be okay it doesn't really do the craziest amount of damage and it is pretty slow but it actually does allow you to just block deflect and just attack all at the exact same time which is very nice. The second one actually gives you guard parry which is exactly the same as the fable art guard parry and it will actually consume a fable charge and the third one is counter charge when actually performing this guard parry you can actually just let go of the l2 button and half a second later you have to press it again and you hold on to it and actually do this follow-up attack but you actually can also do this exact same attack when you're just regular blocking but you actually have to have your explosion active it is a very weird thing it doesn't actually explain it very well but when you block when you have your aoe active they will end up taking the damage and then you have to let go of the l2 button for half a second then click it again while holding on to it and then you can do that follow-up attack. So the fact that it's a very good defensive option and when actually maxed out actually does turn into a pretty decent offensive option as well, definitely is deserving a number two. At number one, we have the Puppet String, which is a technique-based Legion arm of which you get pretty much right at the beginning of the game. It's the first one that you do acquire. And ironically, it's probably the best one as well because this thing is a nice projectile of which actually does drag smaller enemies in towards you, which is nice because that means you can just kite one enemy at a time and just end up fighting a bunch of 1v1 battles. Now, unfortunately, against larger enemies, it's going to be just useless. Your puppet string is just going to deflect off them and it'll barely do any damage. But when you actually do upgrade it, it will actually end up being extremely useful against them as well. Now, the first one actually allows you to get dragged towards the enemy when you actually do hold onto it, which is very nice for closing the distance. The second one actually does allow you to dodge after landing a hit, which I guess is pretty decent as well. But the third upgrade is what propels this to the number one spot because when you hold onto the Legion arm while locked onto an enemy, you actually get dragged in towards them, get yeeted up into the air and come down with a cool slamming attack that will end up doing a whole bunch of damage and a whole bunch of stagger damage as well. Now you still have to actually time your attacks because if you just use it while they're in the middle of their attack combo, you're going to get hit out of it and you definitely will get staggered in and yeeted up into the air which is not good, but if you do time it correctly, you can actually end up doing a whole bunch of damage and ends up being extremely useful against smaller enemies and larger enemies that do have a large health pool and a large stagger meter as well. But yeah, for those reasons, this is why I consider it to be the best one in the game. Anyway, that pretty much concludes it for this one. As always, please do like and subscribe and let me know down in the comments which ones you actually find the best yourself and which one you actually had the most success with. And please do follow me on Twitch as well because I am actually live there every single day. But yeah, see you guys in the next one. Bye.